Good afternoon. We're going to speak in English here today, although we have mainly Slovenian speakers. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we're very happy to see, to see some familiar faces here. And for those joining us for the first time, welcome to the fourth edition of Serious Slovenian Business Women Around the Globe, organized under the auspice of the Slovenian Global Business Network. My name is Mate Perosek Cicchini, and I'm an organizer and the host of this episode. This program is supported by the Urat Vader Pluti Slovenia, the Slovenes of the Amazing Pusvetu, in English, the Office of the Government of the Republic of Slovenia for Slovenians Abroad, and also Slovenia's Chamber of Commerce, Slovenia Brazil, and co organized and co hosted by Zavod Viden. Uh, our lovely colleague, Taya Pirnat, who is joining us today here as well. Uh, future females, Piasha Sterle, uh, who's also here, and uh, Anges Kozler from Schools of Legal and Venture. In this series, we host many top Slovenian women entrepreneurs, experts uh, in niche segments, executives, family business leaders, scientists, business coaches from diaspora and from Slovenia. Uh, in these meetings, they share their experiences and challenges in promoting their businesses and activities in Slovenia and around the world. The aim of this series is to connect the Slovenian women entrepreneurs from diaspora with Slovenian business women in homeland, to promote cooperation and the exchange of business opportunities, where we, of course, naturally expect that this exchange will take place, and getting to know Slovenian talents around the world. In Slovenia, the woman entrepreneur in the subject is the subject of the policy debate, attention, and academic research for several years. Wider engagement of women uh, in entrepreneurship uh, began after the Slovenians' independence in 91. In years after Slovenians' independence, the legal basis for businesses and entrepreneurship development was created. To give you some quick uh, statistic, uh, worldwide entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs. Around 50 years ago, the idea of female entrepreneur managing her own company would have seemed ambitious at best, with discrimination and gender inequality being factors working against women. Women entrepreneurs started their rise to fame. In the last 20 years, women entrepreneurs uh, statistics have shown that the amount of female business owners has increased by 114%. Women own 36% of small businesses worldwide. Women owned businesses generate around $1.9 trillion in revenue. 47% of women started a business in the last year compared to 45% of men. The reason most women step into the world of entrepreneurship is the desire to pursue their passion as the main motivator, financial independence in the second reason, and the flexibility was the third place. The success rate of co-founding for women stands at 69%, and for men, only 60%. Male uh, versus female entrepreneurs. Statistic in, nine, in 2019 showed that women are able to raise more money with crowdfunding than men because of the words female founders tend to use. Women normally like to use words to speak about positivity, such as excited and happy. They also use inclusive language with the usage of the pronoun, we, or words such as together. Crowdfunding is an excellent way for women entrepreneurs to consider when purchasing funding as demonstrated by women entrepreneurs in their personality statistics. 350 new, newly founded companies show that female-owned businesses are safer for investors. Companies that are owned and led by women provide the safer option for investors, yet 
they still struggle to obtain the capital they needed, according to women entrepreneur statistics. This is likely to change in the upcoming years as female presence in the world of business become the norm. There is no doubt the women have made an enormous effort to be present in the world of entrepreneurship. Their impact is remarkable and there is a likelihood that it will only grow. Women have shown that they can have a higher company success rate, but they tend to take fewer risks. So before we invite our distinguished guests today to present, I'd like to give a quick word to my colleague, Tara Pirna, who she's also co-organizer and co-host of Slovenian Business Women Around the Globe to present you with a new project for Slovenian business community in Slovenia and abroad, which is called Business Link, Slovenian Business Link. Please. Uh, thank you, Matea, for the nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as today's event is dedicated to collaboration of business organizations and also doing business abroad, I would like to invite everyone to join Slovenian Business Link. Uh, let me show you what this is. So Slovenian Business Link is an online platform connecting Slovenians and Slovenian organizations all around the globe. Organizations can also create their subsections. For example, there is already a Slovenian businesswoman subsection. Uh, these subsections can be public or visible to only members. Uh, it's important to say that the platform is and will stay completely free of charge. To get to know more about the Slovenian Business Link, uh, you can click the link that I will share in the comments below. Thank you, Taya. Uh, hope you all can join this uh, platform um, to submit to it. So now I'd like to meet, uh, like introduce you to our first speaker, Lydia Drobisch, the founder of Galleria L'Arte di Seta. Lydia is a business owner, an executive coach, consultant, mindfulness teacher, and a therapist. She has helped numerous uh, executives to thrive in, com in complex business environments and in their international careers. Lydia also worked with teams helping them to straighten their relationships and become ready for breakthroughs that seems unreachable. Along with MBA studies, she has also completed two specializations, which is management development and executive coaching. So I'd like to give Lydia the word now to introduce herself and tell us more how she went from flight attendant to business owner and how she would like to extend her businesses to the Slovenian diaspora in the future. Please, Lydia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Matea. Thank you for such warm introduction. And let me also use this uh, opportunity to greet all our guests today. Thank you for joining us. Perhaps I would start with presentation. Excuse me. We'll go to the beginning. We made we, we made a test before, and that's now. Can you see it well? Okay. Uh, so perhaps to answer the first question, Matea, from flight attendant uh, to businesswoman. I think that being flight attendant, especially in those times, was such a great uh, career opportunity that were in late 80s and uh, the whole world was ours. In that time, it was not so easy to travel as today with low cost airlines. Uh, so uh, I had that privilege, I would say, uh, to be able to visit many countries and also to work in, in international teams. A lot of adjustments, a lot of uh, learning, and I think that's everything good base to start our own business. Yeah, so, so today I would like to present you Galleria L'Arte di Seta, what we aim for and how can we support you and um, connecting past and future scene and dreams. 
So every culture has stories to tell. Every family has stories and uh, each of us has stories. And these stories are the basis for how we think about the world, how we think about our lives. What is important to us, and even more actually, stories preserve culture and pass on culture, knowledge, heritage from one generation to another generation. They are a kind of link between past and future. So through stories, we also share our passions, our sadness, joy, memories. Through stories, we connect with other people. And this is what Silk Squares I'm going to talk about, aim to ignite storytelling, sharing past experiences, memories, your future, future already seen or dreamed. Before, to, yeah, what happened now? I, I think I need to stop now, unfortunately, Mattia, because uh, this- uh, Not going further? Uh, I cannot go further now because this was the opened I will just switch for a moment and start for you. Okay. You know, people say you cannot have a Zoom meeting without technical issues. It's Is it, can just you not the real now? thing uh, yeah. without it. Is it okay? <laughs> uh, uh, can you see it now? No. Okay. In case. If we it's get okay. any issues, difficulties, I have also your presentation. Uh, I'm looking for a share screen. Come on, Marco, help Marco, Marco, help. No, it's, uh, <laughs> Marco. it's okay. It, it, the problem was I opened the one which was, uh, it, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So actually you presented me so so well already, uh, Mataya, I will just glance through, namely my uh, core business or main profession is being a coach. Um, what means that what I bring to Galleria is that passion to stories, to discoveries, to go underneath the surface. So I'm a specialist for encouraging conversations, inviting to look, beneath uh, obvious and establish safe environment when conversations go on smoothly. Uh, so what I bring to Galleria is uh, the form a uh, kind of invitation to personal reflection, to meaningful discussions, to storytelling. Uh, second uh, is my passion. I will use the term you mentioned, Matea, before. It's actually allowed now in last years in business world. Passion for art. Uh, the result of that is El Nova Space, which I established uh, at the end of the last year. That's a platform where we meet um, to a very safe place for reflection, for shared experience, discoveries, uh, meaningful discussions about us human beings in general, about uh, leaders through art. At, at, uh, yes, two years before, I established Galleria L'Arte di Seta, and, and I'm going to talk more about that today. So what I'm bringing from this uh, part of me is um, values like uh, relationships are important. Gifting is part of showing care and appreciation of others. Respect and care for heritage. Heritage uh, is a part of our identity, who we are. Uh, respect for cultural differences. Art and business. I would not uh, use them as two polarities as sometimes it's perceived, but it's, I believe that each part can support each other very well together. Creativity. Uh, sustainability, uh, not just in the way how we approach, how we develop the product, but also uh, about mindful um, way of buying, buying things that have long-term usage. Beauty, but perhaps here I make a short break and I ask you, what is beauty for you? Perhaps you can write in the chat or, or just share loudly. 
because beauty is very complex uh, term. There are many uh, definitions depending with whom you are talking about. Is this art specialist or is it philosopher? But uh, to me, it's important what's your personal experience. So we try to engage now our uh, uh, guests. Uh, yes, it's, it's an invitation. To engage a little bit and uh, give the, the definition on beauty. Uh, what is the definition on beauty? I your personal one. It's uh, my uh, point of view is uh, studies. Beauty. Okay, Katya Varshek said the expression of inner world. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, People are more shy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will share okay, my, my... Sorry, Sonia says, uh, nice. The thing, beauty is a feeling, something that gives you pleasure. Whether is it visual or otherwise, and Marko Lazic uh, adding attraction towards something in common. Nice. Yeah, I, I would stay with that. Uh, it's something. It's something touches us. Something happens, and we stop the moment with that appreciation. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter where it comes from. So uh, for me. Um, I became aware of importance of beauty for myself very early when I was small. At that time, of course, I would not use the term beauty. Um, and also my parents didn't um, teach me, you know, or it was not the definition, but it came um, through observing my mother, for example, when she was putting uh, crystal glasses on the table and she said, oh, they are uh, Rugashka. This is Rugashka uh, Steklarna. So there was something that made things more important than others. Or my grandfather, I told to, to Matea in the previous interview, uh, he was a tailor. And um, when I was three, four years old child, I was uh, in his uh, working room and the customers brought clothes. And the way how he touched the clothes, when it's was like that the air stopped or the time stopped. It was everything in that touch. And I just uh, intuitively understand that something important is going on. And then, yes, sometimes he was very happy. I, I noticed his smile. Sometimes he didn't react it so directly. So it was something beautiful in that experience. Or there's a, a, a picture of a meadow it was so beautiful. It was such a joy and beauty, both together, being in, a, um, in the meadow with those plants, flowers uh, of my size, so to say, when there were no physical measurements, uh, any units used that we use later on in our life, like minutes, meters or whatever, just these flowers. So that was beauty for me. And I think that I'm bringing a little bit of that to Galleria. At least I'm taking care of uh, these values. Um, so now it start that I talk not so much about myself and background, but what it is Galeria Larte di Seta, what's our mission? Our mission is um, to uh, help that our past will not be forgotten that there is not just discontinuity. So um, we would like to preserve uh, the heritage, not in the sense of romant romantic view of the past, uh, but more in the sense of continuity and the source of future creativity. We believe that there's part of strength in that. Uh, what, we, uh, what we do, is that we realize our mission through pieces of art that are pre printed on silk that uh, you can take wherever you go um, and in the way it's more comfortable or important for you. So uh, these pieces of art have in this way practical value and sustainable because they can pass 
uh, from generation to generation as well. But yes, uh, Galleria L'Arte di Seta is us. It's a group of creative people that members are changing depending on the project. But what we have in common is our passion for creativity and love for aesthetics. So uh, they are pieces of art because they are, these are not reproductions, reproductions because they are created with this aim uh, in also in a limited uh, series. So they have the same uh, rules as uh, if we print graphic on paper, for example, but they are on silk squares and they tell stories about local environment. Now we are going to talk about Slovenian environment, but it could be also any other environment. As the first uh, collection was uh, launched uh, uh, in uh, September 2020, that was uh, the year of uh, 440 years of Lipica Stiat Farm, we decided to use a Lipizzaner that brought the news about whispers in the world. So here again, we combine the connection to heritage uh, with our product. And two days, the two years, excuse me, a year and a half later. So in December 2022, uh, the breed of uh, Lipizzaner was uh, recognized as a UNESCO heritage, was listed among uh, UNESCO heritage. Uh, so um, the first collection, as I mentioned already, is Whispers of Slovenia. There are five motifs for five areas, regions. These are Bled, Kras, Ljubljana, Piran, and Prekmurje. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, on most of these motifs, there are elements of Slovenian heritage from UNESCO list, but also shows how rich is actually our heritage. Perhaps I could also share here that, uh, of course, these silk uh, squares are nicely packed and uh, together it comes uh, a notice with the impression that the author created while uh, as a basis out of which uh, he created the motif. So uh, when I invite you to look at this uh, scarf the woman is wearing, what do you notice? What attracts you or what are the associations that you get? Can you share something with us? So again, we, we invite all the attendants to share their comments in chat. It, we, it can be in chat or perhaps it's uh, loud directly, there's, there's not a big group. So the symbolic elements. I think Lydia, you will have to enlighten us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, an, it's not that easy now because it's on the screen, first of all. And second, uh, the scarf is not, it's around the head. So it's not easily to see the whole motive, but there are just details. We are very different. Some people would say it's colorful. Somebody would need a little bit more time to concentrate and to find a small detail. What, what is that blue? Why is there blue, for example? And another one could say, is there any blue? Where is blue? So whatever happens, uh, it means that uh, it attracts some attention. And um, whatever somebody notices, it's important. It's a, an invitation or sparkling point, point for a conversation that can start out of that. We have Sonia sharing again, the sharing of feelings between the woman and the horse, trust, safety, beauty. <laughs> Thank you. It's a telepathical telep 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 uh, share of um, confusing mind of human 
beam <laughs> trying to transfer to the horse. And horse is a very sensitive animal. So we see maybe it's a therapy. That's that's very interesting. If I remember how it was on a shooting uh, when the uh, mannequin uh, didn't have any experiences with horses before. And this is already after two, three hours of working together and the horse is a film star, Slovenian film star. So uh, uh, the horse is uh, used to be in front of the camera and it really enjoys, that's enjoyed, that was really incredible. Um, and uh, he had two owners uh, there. Uh, they were whispering to the horse all the time and we made a lot of breaks, but it was therapeutic. Um, after two, three hours, she became very relaxed and the way how she really touched the horse and um, the horse was closer and closer. So here she really enjoys it. But if I go back to the scarf and that's it's a side story to the scarves, um, there are some colors like black, black and uh, red and um, we, we cannot see the motif and details, but if I just stay with colors, these are colors of uh, cars, karst area uh, with wine region, Tehran, for example, or that plant that blossoms in, um, in autumn and it has that purple color, a lot of stone. And the story tells about uh, hard life when the people firstly needed to cut stone to build houses. It's a Bura wind and so on. So um, there are symbolic elements. It's uh, artwork. So it's not so direct. So that uh, when somebody looks at that motif can find a lot of material. At the same time, it's transcendent. It's not only local. So if there would be Staniel, that would be uh, the uh, picture of Staniel, that would be only Staniel. But here is represented uh, symbolically. Uh, so then um, the second collection uh, happened actually <laughs> on a very different basis. Uh, it occurred in a very different time. It was a late winter on the second year of COVID-19 pandemics when morale was low and we faced exhaustion and despair, if you remember. And we wanted to add color to our lives, vivid color. And uh, uh, with that idea, uh, I, I uh, contacted Mitya Fitzko, our painter, recognized pa painter, and was very happy that he was uh, ready to cooperate. And um, yeah, there are two pieces, two scarves, two motives and for both of them is typical that they are such a joy uh, these colors are so joyful really source of energy and reflection of internal balance at the end so that's the second one uh, this one is called moon shooter like uh, aim high also if you don't get so that how you will um, stay among stars. But uh, perhaps it's interesting to add that uh, sometimes we think artists, you know, is different than uh, in business when we need to be in time and follow the procedures. Uh, for example, to, uh, to get the motive from uh, oil painting, for example, to the uh, silk square printed, it's a very um, intensive process. The artist is involved all the time. There are many test prints and the artist really check uh, every detail. Is this why the same as that one? Is this what I wanted? Is this a thin balance? So it's um, uh, quite discipline, hard discipline. Perhaps to continue now with all these different photos, um, uh, what I would like to also share now is uh, um, 
we strive really to bring art into daily life, not just to have it somewhere in a nice place on the wall, but to be in contact. And interestingly, the first reactions of some clients were surprised, also that it's not supposed to be surprised. You know, they said, oh, it's so great, I can touch it. If I go to Galleria, I may never touch, but it's so nice to touch it. And at the moment when they touch the material, you know, the story, the motif become alive, becomes alive in a very different way. They engage with each other. Uh, so the other thing which I would say is that, yes, these are squares in French, carré. these are scarves, but they can be scarves, they can be framed as a, a, a painting and put on the wall. Uh, they can be worn in a very different way, depending on the creativity of the person. And interestingly, uh, in um, Whispers of Slovenia collection, we have very different sizes and also size which is uh, the right one for men for pocket squares. And so I thought it would be great to have gift for both for men and for women. What happened is that there is no rule because today men buy scarves, uh, buy scarves and uh, many women bought the small pocket square. So it's not really what we thought there's connected to the gender. And they are also a source of um, new creativity, what um, we are really happy about it. So in this picture of, again, the same scarf as before, Kras, um, the photograph uh, took them uh, to Venice and made a whole series of uh, new uh, artistic photographs, we are, which are really great. She also made an exhibition. And that's what we really like that something so uh, one piece of art sparkles new creativity I, in the beginning i haven't really emphasized um, slow art and mindfulness but um, I, I i think that it's also important that in uh, the way how we live our life today we are able to stop and enjoy or or experience the beauty, but everything starts with attention, that something grab our attention, that we slow down and notice. And these motives are so rich that the moment when somebody starts to look at them, starts to explore and find um, new things. And that's um, not only a new way of uh, creativity, it's also about um, connecting with other people. It's about um, sharing, what do you see, what is it here? And uh, when being mindful about that, uh, much deeper stories uh, start appearing. There can be stories about our past, their past, now in uh, families with different backgrounds, is that quite important uh, to identify what kind of parts of our identity are from where to understand us better. Yeah, I was talking about uh, personal experience here. I would, I could also add in the past, we were used to uh, send postcards from our trips. Now we take hundreds of photos with our mobile phone. But does it happen with, uh, to you that later on uh, you have no physical photo? When you want to show it to family at home, or at least uh, that somebody complains about that, it's, uh, it's true this happens more often with uh, uh, all the members of the family, all the generation. However, can you imagine to sit around the table and everybody focused on the photo, listening to you when you are sharing about your last trip? And uh, these silk squares are the opportunity to share what you have seen, what you have experienced, what you dream about. And also that others who haven't been there start dream dreaming about that. 
when these stories are told and shared, uh, they ignite shared memories. And that's again, a good way to connect. Um, I would not go too much in detail, but uh, in the time of artificial intelligence and a virtual world that is so present, I think that it's even more important to be successful there is to stay grounded here so that you that we use our senses like touch the material like uh, sight and uh, to be excited about something so that we can succeed also in the ai world um, so let me stop here not to be too long uh, just to finish with a few sentences what is our plan for future, so till the end of the year, a new collection. Uh, we will organize even more events uh, around silk squares and uh, discussions about heritage. And of course, uh, I haven't written it here, uh, it's a mistake, <laughs> but we are also open to cooperation. It means if you have a special anniversary or event you would like to add, um, silk scarf that would um, carry memories uh, for later on, uh, we are very happy to cooperate and to organize that for you. So at the end, let me just uh, thank you, Chamber of Commerce, Slovenia, Brazil, and all institutions involved that made this presentation and discussion possible. Thank you very much, Lydia. Uh, though you Two guests has this thing in common as the coaches. Uh, Lydia went a little bit uh, focusing more on her business owning uh, silk uh, squares uh, materials. And I'd like to know, Lydia, you had any experience working abroad? You already have your clients more in uh, Slovenian market, Slovenian for Slovenian community, or instead you'd like to collaborate with Slovenians abroad, uh, maybe some special businesses that you'd like to do, and how people, how can Slovenian diaspora can, can order these uh, scars, these products, and because it's kind of very interesting, I, I would like to say interesting gift as a Slovenian heritage, and almost uh, half a million Slovenians living abroad, they always like to return to Slovenia in every way. So I think this would be a perfect gift. Uh, maybe Sonia from Canada agree as well. Uh, Slovenians abroad, they really give a lot of culture and Slovenian art. And this is something that scars communicate uh, through art. And maybe if you can let us know how people can order um, the scarves and these details would be very appreciated. And maybe just the differences that I would like to know, you had experience to work abroad, to live abroad, and you, you, you went back to Slovenia. And maybe just a little quick differences between working and living abroad and coming back to Slovenia. Yeah, let me, ask, let me answer first on uh, uh, Galeria uh, scarves. Uh, so uh, we started with this business just before the corona. So uh, <laughs> when uh, right at the beginning, you know, we needed to slow down. Yep. So we haven't developed international business yet. However, we have online store and everything is possible to order already today. And it can be also shipped anywhere, actually. Okay. Uh, I would be happy to connect with Slovenian diaspora and uh, if, if there are any interest, I'm more than happy to answer. So the contact is uh, on the last slide, uh, I, I, probably also for you, Matea, uh, or on the internet page. That question about doing business abroad, I have more experience um, uh, through executive coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I have very different experience because I lived, when I lived abroad, I was not executive coach, but I worked. So that's one part of experience, but I, I would stay with executive coaching perhaps. 
because as a as individual provider, I could not be successful internationally. Uh, in Slovenia, companies know me, so it's a question of references. Uh, when you work abroad, the market is just too big. It doesn't work that way. So I was connected to different institutions like Ashridge Business School or later to Grovel, that was an American company that uh, after 30 years, they stopped the business uh, during the pand pandemic time, but I worked quite a lot through them. And my experience uh, was, um, first of all, it was not easy to be accepted, even not on the associate business. So the quality control process was very well defined. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, um, you are uh, respected and uh, you can work really um, according to your way. So I didn't need to adapt to my style. So I really enjoyed working with that because professionalism and high standard are, are my criteria as well. Okay, thank you, you Lydia. Much. Yeah. Okay. Very much uh, your presentation insights and please connect, uh, contact Lydia via chat. If anyone has any questions, uh, comments, you can or leave, either leave them now or uh, we wait the next presenter to finish. Uh, let's continue. I'd like to give the word to our next presenter, Ms. Marta Kos, the president of the Women Association ONAVE in Slovenia, an active in communication and management consulting and coaching. Marta is an experienced diplomat, business leader, consultant, and communication specialist with a professional background and elite swimming sports. Several years of experience uh, leadership as manager and successful record with project management. Since May, uh, many years, Marta is a strong advocate on the field of gender equality, minority rights. Uh, the spring, uh, last spring in 2022, she was a foreign policy advisor to the new established uh, political party, Freedom Movement, that won the parliamentary election in Slovenia. She is also a recipient of the Preseren Student Award, winner of the title of Ambassador of the Year 2016 in Germany, and also a recipient of the decoration of the German president the Grand or Grand Federal Cross of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany as well. Since November 2022, she's a senior advisor to the CRAB, uh, Car R E A D company, uh, one of the largest public affairs consultancies in Brussels, where she's currently at, and member of the supervisor board, uh, board of the Austrian company in Switzerland. Before that, she served as an ambassador, extraordinary planet country of Republic of Slovenia in Federal Republic of Germany and Latvia. So please, Marta, share with us more on how you went from being an elite swimmer to founding the Women's Association on a way uh, to achieving the, high, the highest gender presentation uh, representation in the media and the public events in Slovenia, and also somewhere in between the presidential campaign running for the presidency of the Republic of Slovenia. Please, Marta, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Matea. As uh, you have explained now, all the listeners can, can see how crazy my career uh, has been. But there is one red light, uh, probably, which is uh, curiosity and uh, discipline. And this is then the connection from the elite swimming, which was actually happening in the Yugoslav times. So this is really decades, decades back. Uh, uh, but still, it was one of the most greatest times um, in my career. And I'm happy that I have a follower. My nephew is now, uh, for my brother, he is now eight and a half years old, and he's, of course, he's a swimmer. And uh, last week I was to Slovenia, and he told me, you know, I will go to the Olympics. 
And I said, okay, but you know, if you want to go there, you have to train a lot. Yes, I know this. Then he wait, went away to play and coming back, he told me, I will not just go to the Olympics. I will win the Olympics. So I said, okay, you know, uh, if I would have had <laughs> so much, uh, I don't know, this uh, uh, courage, uh, okay, I had it, but this is somehow. So we found out that uh, this will be in 2000. Uh, 32 in uh, Brisbane. So now I'm preparing my, my nephew to, to, to become a, an Olympia uh, winner. But coming, going back to uh, association on a way or uh, she knows, there was really, you know, I, I love the saying of Steve Jobs that somehow at some point in the life, everything you have done in the past is somehow connecting and this connecting dots are defining what we are today or what we do today. So coming from the media and dealing with the gender equality or uh, uh, all inequalities, which I have also experienced in my life, um, I found out two years back that there is no NGO in Slovenia who would deal with uh, gender inequality uh, when we speak about guests being invited to the media or public events. So we, we are quite good on the field of gender equality in Slovenia. And we also speak about uh, gender equality when it's about leadership uh, in the media. But uh, we have never been spoken about how comes that there are three to four times more men who are invited to the media or public events. So one of the service, which was already made in Slovenia in 2018, uh, has shown that it was 24% women and meaning 76% of men being invited into the, the media. So the, the main goal of the association uh, is that we uh, fight for a better representation of uh, women uh, in the media and on the public events. And we are doing this on uh, two sides. First, we found out, and this is something what journalists are telling us, it is three to four times more difficult to get a male guest or especially to the television or a female guest. Uh, we have, I, I can see Robert, I can see uh, Ange. Uh, you know, I envy you because you have no problems attending the media, but uh, we have uh, this tendency, uh, we women, we tend to say, oh, do you really think I am good enough? Uh, couldn't you ask somebody else? Or I don't look well today, or uh, you know, my hair is gray or so on. So, which also has to do with uh, the fact that if let's say now Robert and Andre would go to the media and would let's say be on the television, nobody would react on how they look, but nearly everybody reacts how we women look. So, you know, the hair is not okay or the, the haircut is not okay. The cleavage is too low or the, the, the rock is too short, or the uh, high heels are too high. So in this respect, many women are afraid to go to the media. But really, under the line, it is also our fault of uh, us women that actually it is the same pattern as we say for uh, applying for the job. You know, uh, they say that... Uh, men apply for a job if they fulfill nine out of 10 uh, conditions and we women, uh, uh, no, so they, sorry, they uh, apply if they fulfill six out of 10 uh, and we have difficulties to apply if we fulfill nine because it is not 100%. So why is this? It is of course, connected to the tradition, to the patriarchal world we uh, grew up uh, in. Uh, it has to do with the uh, uh, re-traditionalization tendencies we experience today, especially in some European countries also, where uh, some of the political party would love to uh, send us back uh, to cook, to have children and to go to church. 
if I mentioned the famous uh, 3K uh, from, from Germany. So in, in this respect, we, in our association, we uh, work with women to get them more, to be the more self-confident that they will uh, go to the media. On the other hand, we also have to educate media. Because, you know, uh, we just uh, have reported uh, two days back, there is a podcast uh, numbers on the radio, television and uh, MMC of the television of Slovenia, where they have a great uh, journalist who actually in the last season of his uh, podcast had had, has had 13 um, female guests and 10 male. So it is about, this is really a rarity. So he was having more uh, uh, female guests than uh, men guests. On the other side, the average is quite bad, especially when we speak about the uh, national uh, national television. There are many, many political uh, talk shows where, uh, you know, for instance, one arena on the national TV, where in uh, the last uh, months there have been uh, around 40% of the shows without zero uh, zero female. So this is why uh, why we exist, and uh, uh, I would call upon you to join the the network, uh, the network which is also called uh, Onave. She knows, and this is a free platform, so it is nothing to pay. Uh, it is only uh, sorry, Anja and Robert. This is only for uh, for uh, women. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can um, put yourself or write into this uh, network. Uh, then you cross, you know, the fields where you are the experts of and the media and the organizers of the events then can uh, find uh, find the proper, uh, the proper guest. So we have to educate media because what I have said at the beginning, the, the question of gender equality uh, when inviting guests to the media or public events wasn't present at all. And connected to this is also the question, if female uh, member of the society or women members of the, let's say now, so Slovene society get enough recognition for their contribution uh, to the well-being of Slovenia, or if they get enough contribution for everything what they do good in their lives, being on the field of the uh, self-employed uh, entrepreneurship or being a great uh, scientist or doing something good and well for, for the well-being of uh, whole uh, Slovenia. So uh, our principle is first we count, then we take the action. What does it mean? For instance, first we count, uh, we counted that uh, since we got independent and until the end of the last year, there were only 12.6% female or women who perceived the highest uh, awards, uh, state awards uh, awarded by the state president. And nobody would say really that that males are seven times more uh, have more contributed uh, to the well-being. This is the definition of when you can get the, the medal or the state award. So seven times more men. And again, we come to the conclusion that sometimes it is our fault because we don't want to step in the front or it is also the fault that uh, the media usually speak about successful people and successful people are usually those who are in the uh, economy or uh, in the politics. And this is something else what we are fighting against, you know, being successful, you know, for a mother who actually brought her three, four, five children to be able to go in the world is for me much more successful than could be one CEO of a very, 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 uh, result-oriented and successful company. So this kind of uh, redefinition of when we are successful, this is one of the very important parts. I have to admit that uh, I'm, I'm surprised as of today, uh, we have 445 uh, members of the, of the network. 
And uh, we also want to work on the solidarity among us and knowledge sharing. You know, knowledge sharing or knowledge is one of the most important pillars when we speak about success in our lives for men, for, for, for women. But without knowledge, you know, you, you cannot be an expert. So how to share the knowledge you, Matea, have, uh, Lydia was talking about, Matea has, and many others, how this knowledge we actually gained in the past years could be now shared with others. So uh, on the principles of uh, solidarity, we call upon our members that actually they are ready to give their knowledge uh, through different workshops or meeting uh, to the uh, to the others. So now, um, when we have been two years out on June uh, the second, uh, we started with a campaign um, for 50, 50 50 meaning fifty uh, female receivers of the uh, state awards and uh, fifty men percent. I'm talking about the percentage. And we got quite a positive feedback from the state uh, president, Dr. Natasha Pierce uh, Musar. Uh, this is also what we have to do by ourselves. So she called us, she, she told me, you know, uh, I agree, we should have more, more women, but you have to bring me the candidates. I cannot take care of the higher number of the re recipients if nobody will uh, uh, suggest uh, women. So uh, this is uh, the second call to action today to the audience. First, please sign up on the uh, uh, network uh, on a way uh, she knows. And secondly is if you know for any woman who should have received the high state award, and hasn't done this or hasn't become it yet, please come back to me. We will help you to do the uh, candidacy and we will write to the president. So this is my big wish that we all, you know, it is not a problem of only, only the ex-presidents that they didn't care about this question. Uh, they could do more. On the other hand, it is uh, the question of all of us, we, if we have enough courage or if we can encourage others to run for these uh, medals of uh, honor. Uh, every citizen of Slovenia or organization in Slovenia can suggest who should get this uh, state uh, award. Also your Slovenian Global Business Network, or the Chamber of Commerce of Slovenia, Brazil. So uh, everybody can and do this. And one more thing, uh, it, uh, to be on the platform, uh, you ha don't have to be a Slovene. So it is a platform of uh, female professionals who work in Slovenia or who work in connection with Slovenia. So you can also work in Brazil like you, Matea, and be uh, and be a, a member. Uh, or there is a German lady living in, in Germany, but dealing with uh, some topics which is important uh, to Slovenia. Why are we doing this? Um, I have to admit that uh, after following especially the European uh, gender policy in the last 15 years, I thought that it will at some day become better, but it didn't. You know, we speak about diversity and inclusion in the companies and people are people, the companies are investing according to one source, nearly 10 billion uh, euro uh, on the uh, world level for diversity, but uh, the results are devastating. So. Uh, it is not something, the gender equality, which will uh, help, uh, which will happen uh, just alone. And uh, it is a non-natural situation that men have always the advantage. There are more men uh, on the leadership positions. Uh, men are having higher salaries. The, Slovenia is really good on this field. And uh, it is an unnatural position that men are being more present uh, in the media. 
and why, and I'm coming to the conclusion, uh, taking care of gender equality in the media is so important. If there are three to four times more men in the media, meaning that we get the explanation what is going on in Slovenia, in the world, merely through the men's glasses. This could be okay, but it is known that we women sometimes have different opinion. This is the same discussion with the uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, intelligence uh, today. Uh, it is known that actually the first who, uh, people who have written the uh, algorithms for artificial intelligence have been men, and this is still having an impact on what's going uh, what's going on. So, to which extent? We will use all the knowledge we have in women, uh, in men, uh, actually for a better society we we'll live in. This is the cause we are fighting for. Congratulations on that cause and uh, giving us all uh, this insight. But with Ona B, how much the results from two years and today have been achieved? Yeah. Uh, we are doing uh, quantity, uh, quantity analysis every month with the help of the uh, um, uh, company Clipping uh, DOO. And in April this year, we have had a, a super result and a record, which, which was 41% uh, of women uh, being uh, represented uh, in the media. But uh, I would love to strike that this is only quantitative. Uh, we are now in the process of doing the, the first and the biggest research on the qualitative and quantitative uh, research on the representation of uh, women uh, in the Slovenian media, done by a, a professor, uh, Dr. Alenka Jelen. She's working at the University of uh, uh, Stirling in, in Scotland. This will be the first survey where we will be able to say, let's say, uh, Lydia is a guest on the TV and we will find out if she is a guest because she is a partner of a well-known husband or if because she has something clever to say. So because, you know, uh, there are many, many women present in the media because of their wardrobe, because of their high heels or just being a partner from somebody. This is good, but you know this is not what we are striving for. So uh, we will measure in which roles uh, women in Slovenia media are represented, and uh, we will uh, bring the results. Uh, we will pub publish the results in October this year. Perfect. So you told us that you give kind of training from everything. It's it's more emphasizing on the on the niche, the 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 industry that she's covering uh, or the scientist of the area that she is. So she has to do the training of speaking, public speaking in this matter, and also the appearance. Yeah. Uh, which is yeah. a very good question. We do this in uh, two directions. First is uh, the knowledge or the skills you need to uh, appear self-confident uh, in the media. And this is from business etiquette on how to uh, perform or how to be a trademark, how to, how to speak, you know, how to behave. The other part is the general knowledge. For instance, we have had uh, in May this year, we have had a round table about the sustainability in, mm -hmm. uh, in Maribor. Uh, we had a talk to the three uh, lady judges uh, at the Constitutional Court of Slovenia in uh, in June. In the autumn time, we will invite, and this will be something special for us, just men to speak about the gender equality. So we want to get their knowledge, how actually their experiences and knowledge could help us uh, being more present in the media. And for instance, I really love this topic. We have a great uh, member uh, lady uh, in our network. She is retired, but she is very active. And one day she came to me and told me, you know, I would love to organize a round table on the topic, five things every woman should know before retiring. 
meaning on the field of finances, on the field of well-being, on the field of how to deal with the family, especially with the husband. One of the questions is, you know, how much to leave to inherit or how much to spend? You know, when she was explaining this to me, I said, okay, you know, this is really, this is the second part, meaning a general knowledge of something useful for uh, for women. Perfect. But uh, uh, maybe talking about the parents, uh, I don't want to expose her too much, but Matea is here, uh, Marques from uh, Portugal, and she actually works as a stylist, a very successful stylist. She has uh, also clients in the United States, and uh, this is something you can do. You can maybe link uh, between you two and see sure. what she has any suggestions on because she works with this she's yeah she's a, thank she's you you know every contact is i will be i'm grateful for every contact because and this is the knowledge sharing you know uh, uh i will be 60 soon so uh, as uh, lydia is no. now <laughs> thank you as lydia is now you know uh, putting her energy in some other products so you know I, I want to to give back I know to share my knowledge it wasn't always nice during my career you know I really had suffered uh, on the field of gender inequality uh, when I was working for a Swiss uh, corporation Gustav Kaiser Training International there were colleagues who didn't want to speak to me because I was a woman and in their eyes not uh, successful enough until the day when I was for five consecutive years, the best coach in the world of this Swiss uh, corporation. Now, you know, then when uh, a colleague came to me and said, okay, now you can sit at my table because years back, you know, he refused me sitting at his table. So, you know, going through these experiences, uh, I want to share this and uh, also to call upon women, it is uh, nothing, we will get nothing for free. Uh, some people are saying me, come on, Marta, it is not modern anymore for fight for women. But, you know, we can fight for women in so many different, uh, different levels. And uh, uh, we cannot do this without men. Uh, what I mean is, uh, as long as there is, a, let's say, um, the male prime minister, you know, I was bragging when he became the manda, man, man, uh, he got the mandate to become the prime minister. And I told him, you, we should have 50-50 in the government. And then, you know, when I was really, you know, everything, I was really stressing this point. One day he told me, if you go on with this, your honor way, story or shit he mm -hmm. said i will found the association he knows better <laughs> so she knows and he knows he knows better today we don't have uh 50 percent of women in the parliament we have made a huge success you know two days back the uh, global gender gap report by the world economic forum which has a seat here in geneva where i live has uh, posted the, um, the last report. And uh, it will take us 131 years to come to the gender equality based on today's uh, development. And uh, Slovenia has made a progress. So last year we've been on the position 29. Uh, 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 sorry, this year we, we are 29. Last year we have been on the position 39. But listen to this, in 2017, we have been on the position number seven. So we are going back. Okay. And this is not, you know, uh, happening just, uh, just like mm -hmm. this. So it is never too late to fight for the gender equality. I'm speaking about gender equality. It's not only about men and uh, women, so all the sexes. And of course, uh, speaking about gender equality also mean that we will help to fight men if they will feel not equal in our society. So this goes both hand in hand, but usually we don't do this. Let's give opportunity to Robert, Marco and Ajay <laughs> to comment if they have any comment on that. 
Well, I do. Well, no, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, some people don't say no. Well, okay. first off, first off, uh, for example, Marta, when you talked about media presence, you, knew, you, see, you see, from my perspective, I didn't notice that there was such imbalance. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to be educated about that because obviously we all have points of view that also have consequences in today's society, of course. Um, but um, I would also stress that I like the approach that you're taking because I think that's how you win the Olympics. <laughs> it does, just does, don't go just like, you know, through the wall. Uh, but I think in, by this approach, you will find paths uh, to achieve those results, which are obviously necessary to be achieved. Uh, thank you for your words. You know, even I, I am a journalist. I worked in the media for years. I had no clue that there are these discrepancies between how uh, we are featured, uh, how we are featured in the uh, in the media. And you know, uh, our vision is 50-50, But I'm also aware that there are some fields where where you will be always better. And you know, when, when I speak about gender equality, you know, I always sometimes get criticized. We will never be equal. Can you run 100 meters as fast as I can? Of course I can. I will never be that quick, Anje, as you can be on 100 meter running. So this is not the, the, the equality. It also has to do, um, you know, with, uh, uh, how is this in English, pravichnost, yeah, I don't think that equality necessarily means everything is the same. Okay, but uh, yeah, but yeah. in it, some things, like you said, are natural. But don't get me wrong, because I know that you all, all often hear, yeah, it's natural that men do that. That that's not the that's not the connotation I want to make. Um, but mostly, I don't know. Our firm is sixty forty in favor of women so <laughs> and you are still smiling <laughs> of course that's why i am <laughs> that's, that's great he's, he's supporting a lot of slovenian global business uh, slovenian business women around the globe which we're also connecting with another society association from trieste um, and i think it's nice that it's growing this association's uh, women and supporting the businesses and uh, Slovenian business women around the globe, and also in Slovenia. Uh, we're coming to the end. Uh, I would like to give opportunity to, to more people to speak up or comment or anything. If not, I would just like to say thank you for both uh, guests uh, for being here and taking time and sharing all your insights and promoting yourselves. And this is the channel where we do so. And we're here to support you. We're here to, to, to do anything possible to your, for your voices to be here. Uh, so thank you one more time for everybody coming, tuning in from Canada. Our dear Sonia, always here, always among us. And Matea again from Portugal. And many people coming from different places, not only Slovenia. And good night, good evening, and uh, stay tuned for more events to come. Thank you, and all the best to you all. Have a nice summer. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you all for coming again.